up, YouTube? <laughs> what is up, YouTube? We are back here again with another tutorial. This one is the fourth tutorial of our peripheral library series. And this one, this one I'm going to be explaining can. Um, so these are the topics. So we're going to go over overview, uh, what can is, what, what it got used, and uh, why did people make it. And then we're going to go over the physical view, what it looks like, like when you want to set up a system that uh, composes of multiple components that are talking to each other via can. This is how it looks like. Uh, and then we're going to look at what a can message looks like. And then we're going to take a look at our can protocol because we're using like some of the bits to um, as like a message ID or like device ID. And we have also implemented our own acting mechanism on can. So you guys get to see that. It's pretty sick. And then, oh, sorry, we're going to demo uh, with virtual can. So this virtual can is a really interesting thing because you guys can actually play around with can without actually having any hardware. But then it turns out that once you connect the hardware, it actually looks like like nothing changes other than your connection. Um, like the commands that you run and all that kinds of stuff kind of like remain the same, which is super, super useful when you're debugging the car. It's actually really good. Um, and then I do another demo with actual CAN. So I'm going to actually physically connect a CAN bus to a microcontroller, and then you guys are going to see what happens. Boom. Next one. Overview. What stand? What was that? What does CAN stand for? It stands for Controller Area Network. Uh, it was designed for cars. And then lots of systems right now use it. Drones, our car, like other cars, everyone uses CAN, I guess. Um, so Carl, which was, who was the previous firmware lead, um, he's a sick guy. Uh, he wrote a pretty good documentation about what CAN is. So if you just take a look at this link on Confluence, there's intro to CAN and then just like all the stuff that Carl wrote. So you guys can read this stuff. And then, Wikipedia's page on CAN is also pretty good. Um, so you guys can just read this. But this will tell you a lot about the protocol itself and like how it looks like. It like gives you a little bit of history, protocol, like what things are. But for the purposes of this card, you don't need to understand this entire page. All you do from your perspective is that you send messages and you receive messages. So you got to make sure that you're setting the IDs of the messages correctly. So physical view. It actually looks like it has two lines. They're twisted pair, so we do them twisted pair so that they're, um, what's it called? Um, there's no inductance or noises there. So, film me. What's noise? Uh, it could be like different noises. So, there's usually inductance and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is what a can, look, can line looks like. Don't get me, just get this line. Okay, so this is the can line, right? It's a twisted pair, as you guys can see. So it's two wires, and it con gets connected to your microcontroller. This is like the can header. Doesn't matter which one. Doesn't matter which one. And then it connects like this, right? Is that good? So each controller board has two of these because one goes in it, and then the other one comes out and goes to the next one, and then comes out goes to the next one. That's how all of our controller boards are connected, so they will all become... Uh, they will all be on the same network, right? So we chain them in series? We chain them. Like, it's kind of like they're daisy chains, but okay. not really because in daisy chaining, you put the input to the output. Yeah. But, yeah, it's kind of like that. Uh, you just care. <coughs> so, oh, another really important thing. Oh, you stopped it? Okay. Another really important thing is that the can lines must be ter terminated with 120 ohm resistance. So in this wire that I'm connecting, <coughs> right, you can see that there's 120 ohm resistance here, right? Can you see it? Is it like in focus? Well, you can see it. Anyways, so um, the entire CAN bus, so let me actually show you like a diagram on um, Wikipedia. Probably they have some like good diagram. Yeah, there you go. So this is what high speed CAN looks like. So your devices are all connected to the CAN bus. So this is the main CAN bus, right? And then there's only one resistor, the resistor that you need to put here, right? Well, in this picture, there's two, right? There's one at this end and one at this end. But realistically, those are just two resistors in parallel. So, um, and that termination needs to be 120 ohms, right? So if you set up your system and then it doesn't work, you can stop recording. Uh, if you set up your system, it doesn't work. It's 
one potential reasons could be because the resistance uh, is not set. This is what a CAM message looks like. So you have your arbitration field. This is the field that basically determines which device, um, like what is the ID of this message, and then we divide this ID to like our own IDs. And then there's control, data, and then CRC. And then there's end of frame. So in firmware, you guys won't get to see CRC and end of frame. These are just handled by the lower, lower layers of CAN. The parts that you actually get to see are here. The control, this part, there's um, data length bits, so this, this part, that basically tells you how many bytes of data you're about to send. So right now it's one. That means that following this frame, there's going to be one data frame, which is eight bits or one byte, right? So this is what a CAM message looks like. So our protocol, there's 11 ID bits. So as you can see, there's 11 of them here. And then the bits, uh, bits 0 to 3, so 4 bits are for the sender ID. And then number bit number 4 is used for uh, acknowledge messages, messages or data messages. So with some messages that we send, it's really important that we assert that the receiver has received it. So if you set this bit, that means that, <clears throat> sorry, if that's an acknowledge message, then the, send, then the receiver will send you back another message saying that I've acknowledged your last message. So that's what it's used for. And then there's message ID, uh, which is specific to our car. Um, so we haven't defined the sender ID and the message ID for the new car, but we will very soon, probably next week. Um, and then virtual CAN. So there's this project called Socket CAN, which is a whole lot of drivers that Volkswagen people added to Linux. The one really cool thing that these drivers do is that they allow you to just come connect to the CAN bus to any car and then like start sending messages on that bus, right? It's pretty much uh, like Ethernet when you can like listen on a port, you can actually listen on the CAN bus. So like the CAN interface comes up and shows up as just like an, any other network interface. So it's no different than your, I mean, it, it is different, but like it's very similar to your, for example, Ethernet connection or like your wireless connection to your Wi-Fi. So CAN shows up just like another for a network interface. So VCAN is for a virtual network. SLCAN is for whenever you have a serial, uh, serial wire um, to uh, connect like a, like a USB to CAN converter. Or it can be like an actual CAN dongle. So I haven't found a serial, like a SL CAN uh, converter um, in the bay. So right now we have VCAN and CAN, and I'm gonna show you both of these guys, right? Um, so, <clears throat> oh, it lets you, I guess it's like this, a little English problem lets you have a virtual CAN interface just like normal networking. And then you can do stuff like sending CAN messages or see the network traffic, right? So I'm gonna show you guys how a virtual CAN interface comes up. Are they all, are all the nodes masters? Is that how it works? Like yeah, it's multi-master. Oh. So basically when multiple nodes decide to um, drive the line, all of them listen on the same line, right? And then as they're sending their messages, they will start reading on that line themselves, right? And um, there's something called a dominant bit and a recessive bit. And dominant bit is a zero and recessive bit is a one. So how it can works is that you pull the lines apart from each other when you're sending a one, and then you short them when you're sending a zero, right? So the senders will have different IDs, and the IDs are sorted from low to high, right? So the lowest, ID will have the highest priority, right? That's part of CAN's design. So this part of Wikipedia actually explains as well. Let's say node 15 and node 16 decide to start their um, messages together, right? So this is what they send. This is what you see on the CAN bus, right? So the ID of node 15 is 1111. The ID of node 16 is 10000, right? So these are in binary. So they start sending with the most significant bit all the way to this least significant bit, right? So this is the arbitration part of your CAN. So this is basically the first part of your CAN frame. Where is it? Here, right? So these green ones that I showed you, that's basically what they send first. 
So they're first starting these, sending these. Let's say they're sending at the same time. Soon as node 15 sends this zero, because, you know, bit four uh, over here at node 15 must be zero, right? The can data will be zero, right? Because this, this uh, master will keep them apart, but this master will short them. So the dominant bit will win, right? So this will become zero. So after node 16, node 16 sets this to one, but then realizes that there's a zero on the line, <coughs> it stops transmitting because it knows that some higher priority device is already transmitting right now. So that's how can knows. Like that's how multiple masters know when they can use the bus. If your priority is really low, you know you always have to make sure that, like you may, um, yeah, like as long as someone else with a higher priority is sending, you cannot send, right? And then the rest of the frame beat gets sent right after this. So, virtual can. Let's see how virtual can works. So I'm gonna create a new Tmux session, and then I'm gonna SSH into uh, Vagrant. So Vagrant SSH. Uh oh. Okay. We're in. All right. And then Give me let's a SSH again. Oh, it's okay. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do here is that I'm going to bring up a CAN interface, a virtual CAN interface. Right, so let's do that. <coughs> so for that, I actually have a um, thing that I sent here. Okay, I wrote this documentation. So this is for listening on a CAN interface. Um, so first, you have to make sure that the correct uh, kernels, kernel modules are loaded. So sudo mod pro CAN, CAN ra, and then vcan for virtual CAN. So once you run all of these, all of those kernel modules get loaded. And then, um, so right now we're not actually using an actual CAN interface, we're using a virtual CAN interface. So let's just do this. So once you run these two commands, so what this does is that it brings up a CAN device that its type is virtual, and we're gonna name it vcan0. So this part you can change, like this little part you can change. And then you do sudo ip link set, set up, that brings up that interface, whatever that means. So, so if you do if config, this shows you all the different interfaces that are currently in your computer, right? So in my virtual machine, this ENP0S3 is probably the um, interface that it has to my host machine. That's how it gets connected to the internet. There's another one. So I don't know what the difference between these two is. And then there's a loopback in, uh, interface, and then there's a VCAN0 interface, right? So it shows just like any other uh, network interface, right? So you can do pretty cool stuff here because you can do, there's something uh, called can dump. So it's can dump. This basically listens on the bus and dumps whatever message it sees on the bus onto your screen, right? So if I do can dump, it tells me that it looks for, an, it wants an interface. Because which interface are we doing? So can dump vcan0, which was the name of the virtual interface that we had, had, right? So this is listening on that bus right now. It doesn't show anything because no one's sending anything, right? And now on the same bus, I'm going to send a message. And for that, I'm going to do can send, right? So it tells me which device you want to send a message to and what can frame you want to send a message to, right? So I do can send, and then let's say the device that I want to send to has an ID of zero. So this is the arbitration ID. <clears throat> so this is a really high priority message, let's say, right? Does it have to be four zeros? It has to be three zeros because there's 11 bits, and each one of these, this is, these are actually hex values, right? So each hex value gives you four bits, so you need three hex values to uh, determine what message you're sending. Right to determine 11 bits. And then after this, you have your data fields. So let's say I want to send a byte that holds the value of 12 in hex, right? Oh, sorry, I should say vcan0. Look, I sent this message and on this side, it got received, right? So 
you can see that the interface is can vcan zero. It shows you the arbitration message, right? So arbitration ID, this is the first 11 bits. And then it says, <coughs> shows you the DLC or like data length code. And then it shows you um, the data that you sent, right? So if I change this 000 to 00A, and then change this 12 to 12AB, you can see that this is for device number 10, or like the ID of the device is 10. The number of bytes that we sent was two, and then the bytes that we sent was 12, and then AB, right? So we send this, so that's basically how you can see what the CAN bus is sending, right? But a really cool thing, so now let's go to the, um, okay. Let's go to a project that is on your boards, or like in the uh, firmware repository. Um, so CAN communication. This is an example project, and every time you hook up your board and you see that CAN is not working, just run this project, because it's a relatively simple project that and it, like ensures that your CAN is working. Maybe your hardware has a problem, maybe your software has a problem. You can come and check it all, all over here, right? So to use our CAN library, our CAN library actually internally uses a finite state machine. So you need to make sure that you're enabling FSMs and that you need to ensure that you're enabling event queues. So how do you know all this stuff? You can just go to can.h. That's our CAN library, right? So it says CAN application interface. It requires GPIO, soft timers, event queue, and interrupts to be initialized, right? So <clears throat> the way it works is that there's a CAN settings. Here you set things like bitrate, device ID, GPIO address for send and receive, so TX and RX. Um, there's event IDs that you need to pass into it because our CAN library internally uses events. So um, we haven't gotten to event queues yet, and that will be another tutorial. However, right now, <coughs> um, just accept that um, to use our CAN library, you need to do uh, a form of event-based programming, and also you need to interact with that finite state machine of our CAN library, right? So CAN communication main, boom. So here we are. So you need to, like, whatever events that you define in your project, they need to include CAN events RX and PX as well, right? So right now I'm initializing it to 10, but it doesn't need to be initialized to 10, right? So this is just an enum. Um, I can actually show you an example of a uh, another project. So for, for example, chaos was the old car's power distribution. And then if you take a look at the events of here, you can see that these are the different events that are defined over there, right? Chaos events can transmit error. Has it been updated now? Oh, it hasn't. OK, there we go. So you can see there's chaos event, can transmit error, can fault, can rx, can tx. And then there's after that, there's like all these events that are specific to uh, chaos, right? And then there are like more events that are defined. So these are only the events that are like specific to can. But then if you take a look, you can see that these, event, these IDs start from like 2 to 9, and then this one starts from 10, and then it goes to 27, and this one goes from 29 to 41. Because there's only one event queue in your entire application, right? So <clears throat> you can have different enums that all start at 0, and they're all events. Otherwise, you know, an event ID must be unique, right? So if you define a chaos event, uh, like a can event here, or like you define a finite state machine event, or you define a event sequence, these all have to be exclusive, mutually exclusive, so they shouldn't overlap, right? So that's something to keep in mind. <coughs> <coughs> can communication, or, oh wait. Let's go back, let's go back, okay, there we go. So I've defined my events, right? And then I define the device ID of the device that I'm trying to be within this project, right? So your board will have its own device ID. I need to allocate some storage, so some static variable that doesn't go out of, like, doesn't get deallocated. Um, and then there's a receive callback. I'm here forward declaring it, but it's actually implemented down here, right? 
So that's my receive callback, and then I have. I actually decided to turn on and off the LEDs every time I receive a message so that you guys actually can see something happening on the boards themselves. But right now, I'm just going to run this project in Linux because um, this is still in the virtual can part. So what this program does is that whenever it receives a message, it just outputs receive the message, and then it outputs the data that it received. Right? That's it. That's all it does. So. I just do a welcome to CAN demo in the beginning. And then how it works is that I init GPIO, and it event queues, and it interrupts soft timers. And then, actually, soft timers I may not need in this case. And then I initialize the LEDs. Um, so if you guys are not going to see it right now, but you will see it shortly. And then you need to call init CAN, right? So this init CAN, I think, is another function here. Yeah. So Basically, you need to provide CAN settings, what it is, right? Device ID, bit rate, RX, TX, and all that stuff. This loopback is only used for our tests. So when you're using, um, when you're writing unit tests, you would need to set this loopback to true. But we're not there yet, so don't worry about it. So you initialize CAN, passing it this storage and this settings. And then you. Uh, register a receive handler or rx handler. So it says can register rx default handler. What does this mean? This means that you're registering a handler for any kind of message. By default, you would be able to define a handler for a specific message ID. So if you can see, there's a message ID that it takes right in the beginning. If you take a look at the message ID, message ID is basically like a U16 int, right? So that's our handler. And then every time that I receive a message, I print it, and then I log the data that that message contains. So let's program this. <coughs> or sorry, let's just run this in um, Linux. I'm going to go to shared firmware xid. Now let's do make program project equals and then over here you have can communication let's just copy that paste here right so boom sorry no I don't want to program it I want to run it make run because I'm running it in Linux right and then platform equals x86 there we go so you can see that it's started running, right? And every time that you do make run program, it actually brings that virtual CAN interface up itself. So you don't need to bring it up yourself. So you can see that VCAN0 got brought up. So now I can send a message to this, right? CAN send VCAN0 000012AB. Let's see if we can receive anything. We don't. Why, do, why don't we? Because this device has an ID of 1 right so let me actually take you through these bits again so bits 0 to 3 are the sender ID right um, and then uh, so whenever you have oh those are the sender ID they're not the device ID huh okay whatever so I guess it had to receive it, but point being, if I send a one here, it'll receive it, <laughs> right? So receive the message, and then you can see the data is 12 AB. And then if I change the data here, so like CD, and then 34 or 43, whatever, so you can see like different messages get received, right? Is that good? Does that make sense to everyone so far? So I brought up this program. I sent it a message. And that message got picked up by that program. Is that good? All right, awesome. So let's see if I forgot anything. I probably didn't. It's good so far. So yeah, four is act data. So we're not using that right now. So that's the demo <coughs> for our virtual can. Um, let me show you guys something cooler. So this is kind of like bonus content. Um, 
I'm going to go to the old cars firmware and I'm going to bring up the old cars power distribution, which is a very complicated project. So I can actually show you what that entire project looks like. Chaos. So if you take a look at all these files, sorry, all these files, all, all the ones that actually start with chaos, these are, this is all the different files that that code has. And it's like one of the more complicated projects in the past car because it handles the power distribution um, and it also does like a whole bunch of monitoring, making sure that our powertrain is in um, the correct state. So you need to kind of like, um, like this is a really important project that constantly receives CAM messages. So it's good to demo. So now I can do make run chaos platform x86, right? So this project starts running. So we can see that it's building it right now. And then it's running it. So it says starting chaos, right? So that's the first line in chaos. I can actually show it to you here. Um, sorry. Chaos main. So like this is the main function for chaos, by the way. Look how many levers it uses. Holy. Anyways, so line number line of uh, 111 here says starting chaos. This is basically inside the main function of that project, right? So, um, so you can see this at the top. You can see that it says starting chaos. So I'm gonna do can send. Oh, sorry. Let's do can dump. Can dump the can zero. So this is listening on the can bus, and then it's like constantly receiving the messages, right? So you can see that this message ID is 563. So the first couple bits are probably chaos, like the least significant bits are three, right? So um, if you actually go to, um, in the last cars, whoops, in the last cars code, if you go can message deaths, you can see all the different can device IDs, right? So chaos, which was power distribution, was ID of three, right? And you can see that this board is sending out messages and they're constantly, like the least significant bit is three here, right? And then 56, if you decode it, it basically comes down to, this is basically broadcasting the aux, aux battery voltage. But this is very user, like this is not user friendly at all, right? So ideally you would want to be able to see these messages in a better way. That's why I've been working on this project, which is can analysis. CD can analysis. So, on the activated can analysis, Python, suppose Python pass this. So, these are two commands that I run to ensure that the Python libraries are set properly and like I'm in the right environment. And now I can do Python listen.py. So, this listens on the CAN bus and decodes these messages that I'm receiving and it exactly tells me what's going on. So, Source ID is chaos. Um, it's a data type, like the, the message type is data. And it's basically broadcasting the aux battery's voltage. And you can see that the data is zero because this is the simulated version of that code, right? So because it's a simulation, we're not actually providing actual mock data. It's all just zeros right now, right? So another thing that I can do is to, one thing that chaos does is that it listens to, um, Power, like the battery management system and every time the battery management system comes up it repeatedly sends like heartbeat messages to chaos saying that hey I'm alive I'm here right so as soon as it sends it chaos will start expecting to receive those messages periodically and if it doesn't it'll fault so that's when we disconnect our batteries from the car <coughs> and it's really important for safety right let's go and so I'm going to pretend that I'm uh, the battery management and I'm going to repeatedly send this guy power, uh, power beats, sorry, heartbeat messages, right? CD shared, CD can analysis, conda activate, and then export Python path, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there we go. And then we do Python and then send heartbeat. I'm going to send, so this is a script that we have, uh, test commands send heartbeat. And then uh, 500 it means that every 500 milliseconds, I'm going to send it a heartbeat message, right? Boom. 
So now you can see that it's repeatedly receiving heartbeat messages, right? And for so our battery management system is called Blue Plutus, right? And then Chaos is our uh, other guy. So you can see that the Chaos is sending an acknowledge message for every single heartbeat message that Plutus sends it, right? So you can see that like Chaos, Ac. Can you guys see this? Oh, you can. That totally makes sense because okay. There we go, right? So for every single message that Chaos, uh, sorry, Plutus sends, um, Chaos sends an acknowledgement. So all good so far? Does this make sense? Sure. So now I'm gonna stop sending these heartbeat messages. What is what should happen? Basically, Chaos must freak out, right? It should start disconnecting the relays. So I'm gonna stop. So I'm stopping to. I've stopped to send heartbeat messages. So now you can see <coughs> that chaos up here is basically saying, you know, it's trying to, uh, battery slave. yeah, battery slave and battery main. So we had two batteries, one was slave and one was main. It's trying to open the relays of the battery, right? Because this is really important. This is an emergency situation because this means that our battery has gone off, right? So what happens? We need to disconnect the car and then like pull over in the race and figure out what went wrong, right? This is a really safety information. But what is really cool about this, and you guys will come to appreciate this, is when you guys go to the competition, it's a pain to see these messages, right? Which is why I made this tool to be able to see these messages easier in an easier way, right? What if we're gone in the summer? Um, it's okay, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> Where is the competition? It's in the States, um, American Solar Challenge. So, Which just is southern states, like his summer or something? Uh, last one was in uh, Oregon, I think. And this one is Did we drive the car down there? Yeah. yeah. No, we didn't drive the car down there. We, like, tow the tow we didn't tow it. We, you, in, like, you can't tow the car. You, you just put it in a truck and then moved it down there. Oh, yeah. That's How long did that take? Yeah. That's me. Oh, it was, <laughs> it was like a couple of days. Got to flex on the <laughs> yeah, pull up. <laughs> okay, so that was virtual can. So now let's do actual can. Woo! Okay. So, so all of this stuff that I did so far was within my computer, right? However, actually, let me close this stuff. It's still actually I will need this anyways. Um. Oh. Quit. So, um, this still has like the potentiometer code on it, but it's okay. Um. So I'm gonna write the same. Read this. Sorry, I'm gonna run the same code. But this time, I'm going to run it on the STM32, right? And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to flip the LEDs states every time that this guy receives a CAM message, right? Because a lot of you guys have been wanting to send, like, get CAM to work on your boards. But you had no idea. So this is how you do it. So we have a project. Um, so let me just stop these. These are just a mess I going on. Yeah. What? Yes, we're supposed to see okay, four stuff. Yeah. yeah, you're supposed to see four things. Um, so let's go here and program, make program can communication, right? So can you start filming? Okay, so I'm going to start this can communication project, right? So you can see that. Um, it says, welcome to CAN demo, right? Because it's the first message that I was showing. And what's happening here is that, so take, take a look at what's going on in here. So here we have the controller board. So I'm going to, so to be able to control, uh, to, okay, so zoom out right now. So show the, let's show this uh, CAN to USB dongle. So to be able to send messages to the board, we have this USB to CAN dongle, and then we connect this guy to it. Right? Oh, it's the other way. And then notice that this guy is 120 ohms uh, terminated, right? So there needs to be 120 ohms between your entire CAN bus, right? So make sure that that happens. And then we're going to just put this connector inside here. And on the other side, I'm going to connect this to my computer. So. There we go. 
So now uh, I'm going to send cam messages over this line to this board, right? You guys are going to see that this line is going to show you the output of it. Why does it right? go that way? Sorry? Why doesn't it go the other way? Like to this, this side? Yeah. It could. Doesn't matter. No, I mean like goes this way and you receive cam messages instead of sending. You can receive cam messages as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to broadcast the message. So this guy is going to receive a message. But I could similarly have this guy send out messages. It doesn't really matter. So zoom in on this guy, right? So make sure that the quality is pretty good. So now I'm going to try and send messages to it, right? So let's go back to the to <clears throat> thing that I... Um, the page that I made on Confluence, listening to a CAN interface. So we've done these steps, so the kernel modules are up. So you just need to run these two lines. So what this says is that set bring up a CAN interface of type CAN, right? So this type CAN means that we're using actually like a PCAN, uh, like a peak dongle. And then the bit rate is 500 uh, bytes per second, 500 kilobytes per second. Sorry, kilobits per second, right? So that's the bit rate that you can run your CAN network on. And in our code, we are actually setting that bit rate somewhere here. Um, where was I? CAN communication main. So you can see that CAN hardware bit rate here is set to 500 kilobytes per second, kilobits per second. And if I jump to definition, you can actually see we can actually run it on one megabit per second. 500, 250, 125. These are all the different um, bandwidths that we have available. So um, let's now send a message to this guy, right? So I'm going to go and copy paste this and bring the interface up. So now if I do if config, over here you can actually see the actual interface that came up. So it's CAN0 over here. Oh, you guys can see it. But it's okay, over here it says CAN0. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna send a message to this port. So can you zoom in on it? So um, let's go to here and actually do it over here. Okay, CAN send. And then I'm going to do can0 instead of vcan0 this time because that uh, that's an actual interface. And I send it. And you can see that the LEDs turn off when I, turn the, when I sent it a message. That means that it basically received the message. And it basically tells you what message you sent it. 12, 34, 56, 78, right? So if I add an AB here, it'll send me that. And it'll... Over the here, you can see that the LEDs are flipping. Uh, so CD. And you can provide messages up to 8 bytes, right? So right now, this is 6 bytes. So that's 8 bytes. Let's try sending more. Oh, doesn't do anything. It just, it just ignores the rest of the bytes, right? So that's just something that we just want to try. So yeah, that's how you get your can uh, working on a hardware side. Um, so let's go back to this demo. And yeah, that's it. That's Ken. Thank you so much.